Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday webinar. Today we have a very special couple of guests, I'm excited to say, and I know people are just kind of getting in the room, so um, I'll try to talk slower. But uh, yeah, I th it's a special time um, and actually I think that it's a busy time for everyone, so taking time out and, you know, talking to someone who's who has been working really hard like the rest of you and uh, can kind of maybe give you some tips and, and points how you too can land an amazing internship that's paid, which is uh, pretty wonderful. So uh, my name is Rebecca Roper. I am the head of teaching and learning here in IIDT and uh, just newly crest with that kind of uh, nomenclature. <laughs> <laughs> you probably know who I am because I've been around the college for uh, millennia. Uh, I used to live in the walls, but now I'm actually walking around. It's great. So <laughs> I also get, I have tonight the, the wonderful Stefan Posberios, who many of you would know as an amazing lecturer and maker and um, someone who solves many problems. If I ever have a problem, it's it's I, he's one of my first calls because uh, he, he is a go-to, get it done, absolutely amazing man. So um, Stefan is going to introduce our very special guest. That is? With us. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. You can say. Give me some more. Give me some more. No, yeah. you're going to give me a, a bigger, you're going to give me a bigger head. That's right. He's on the Creative Futures Academy. He's yeah. on the FYMMO team. He yeah. is uh, a father of an amazing young girl. And she don't don't get me started now, because I'll start talk about that all day, and we won't. We won't. Uh, yeah. Sure, as we do. Anyway. As we do. Listen, um, thanks for the intro introduction, Rebecca. You're too sweet. I don't. I can't see any of the students here. Um, no. So yeah. I want to see if there's any names. Okay. Yeah, that's the the issue. I think that the Zoom, you can see people. But uh, go to webinar, which is the platform that the that we use for the webinars. It's it's they're in listen only mode. But I need to mention that all of our uh, your frozen can pop a question yeah. anytime. You see, there's a question thing in your dashboard there. So if you have any questions for anybody, just you write them in, and I'll I'll feed them back to the team. Okay, so in gotcha. that way, you can be wearing your pajamas, and it's no problem. Okay, so just we if can't I can't see my students or anyone that I've worked, thanks. If I haven't, if there's any of the students that I've worked with in the past that are in there, say hello. Um, I just want to see who, who's in here or who we're speaking to. Um, but as usual, thanks to Rebecca who tirelessly organizes and runs these things and does so with great um, humor and great attitude. So it's always good to work with somebody who's passionate about these things and yeah, so it's easy because she kind of just drives you and you don't say no to Rebecca. Anyway, um, I'm delighted to uh, introduce uh, Jody McGrain, who's a, a computing student. I worked with Jody in first and second year in the computing degree, um, and she always had a good attitude, good attender. Um, and I'm supervising her fourth year project now. So we'll, we will be working together a lot more closely this year. So I would say she'll probably end up hating me on a monthly basis, um, but there you go. Um, so uh, I'm delighted to be presenting, uh, introducing Jody to you now in the context for introducing her to, because she uh, applied and was successful for a really prestigious and important UX intern position with a company called Travelport. Mm. We have a long-standing and, and pretty good name in, in the, well, a really good name in the space of UX in the Institute. Um, three staff members, myself included, um, in the computing um, course in the program, we wrote the masters uh, for UX and it's gone from strength to strength. It went from a U masters to two PG dips and now it's got certificates and all sorts of things. So lots of people coming in to take that, whether they're professional or not. And um, we established some good connections with some companies. And one of the companies that we established a connection with was Travelport. Mm -hmm. Travelport got in touch with me about per, the, 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 the possibility of some kind of internships. And of course, I got into my pals, uh, Rebecca and Dawn, and I said, look after it. And Dawn then looked after that. And in one of our Friday emails, I think, Jody, you might correct me on this, she had written about the position with Travelport. And you guys probably get those emails every Friday and there's probably a lot in there and sometimes you might act on it and sometimes you might have other stuff on board, but I would suggest looking into it and acting upon it if and when you get the chance. 
because there's going to be something in there for somebody. There might be something in there for everyone, but there's something in there for you if you really explore it, uh, hopefully for some of you. Jody's one of the people who clicks on these things. She did click on the link. And here we are now. The rest is history. So <laughs> without further ado, I'll let Jody intro, intro, introduce herself to you and maybe talk about the story of, of her and Travelport. And again, uh, thanks, Rebecca. And if there's any of my students in there, just holler, say hello. And looking forward to hearing from you, Jody. Great. Well, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Jody McGrain. I'm a final year student in the Creative Computing course here at the college. And I just have a presentation now to share uh, of me just telling you about my whole uh, application process with Travelport. And Rebecca, or does anyone know where how I can share my screen? Yeah, I'm going to let you uh, be the presenter here. Just give me a second. Oh, she, is that me or you? No, that's you. You're already in. I think that we have a, a behind the scenes helper uh, who is the, the marvelous Caroline Healy, who is uh, just basically makes me look good all the time. Uh, yes. <clears throat> okay. So can you see that, Jody? Um, I think so. Can everyone see my screen? Uh, let's see. No, I can see Travelport on the first slide. Yeah. Do you, can you see that presentation? Yeah. Yeah, if you go through to the next one, can you click through to the next slide? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Before you start there, I just kind of wanted to to mention something. It's sort of like when I when I heard your story, Jody, I felt like this was what I would call a adventure <laughs> interviewing. You know, you had so many machinations of what used to be just a straightforward interview. And that's one of the reasons I thought it was really important to share with the audience today, because more and more companies, and particularly young startup companies and, and companies that are interested in um, in tech and in graduates and all this different stuff, um, they they're looking for something extra, aren't they? It's not just to sit down, kind of have a have a big meeting. There are tiers and tiers of these interviews, um, and I was really fascinated with the. the amount of things that you were asked to do uh, within this as, as an internship. Um, and I think because Travelport actually has a lot of different aspects to that business. So uh, even though you're in UX, they also hire people from different disciplines altogether, don't they? Yeah, they hire, um, for this year, they had a software development internship where they uh, took four people altogether to product departments and they also do a data analytics internship as well where they take one person and then for the UX design this is the first year they're taking interns for that department and they chose just one me. <laughs> and I think it's important you blow blow that horn loud enough it's great and it's lovely to see I'm sorry to you know gender bring into this but it's great to see a, a woman coming in at uh, no number one for something that might be associated in a male dominion um, just kind of shows us how you know, amazing you are. So I won't interrupt you anymore, but I just wanted to mention that to our audience that, so they know that, yes, even though this is about UX, but it's the process you had to go through that I thought was fascinating. So off you go. So for stage one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, um, uh, yeah, so stage one was when first applying for the job, I came across it in, like Stefan mentioned, Don's Friday Jobs newsletter. And so I thought to myself, sure, let's just apply for this anyways. You don't see a lot of UX internships advertised um, lately. So when I applied for that, the first application process was very straightforward. I was able to apply with my LinkedIn, attach my CV and add any extra material. So if anyone out there has a portfolio, I was able to add links to my portfolio that I have to show all my recent projects with um, the college. And then I added my educational background and they also asked questions such as what year I'll be graduating. And then they also asked what um, I expect my GPA to be for when I do graduate. And there's also a few personal questions such as they did ask for what my gender was, my ethnicity and my skills. So you just list them off, you know, team player, communication skills. So it was just your average application form to begin with. When they were asking you about gender, did they give you the did they give you the option of 
uh, prefer not to say or to, what was on the, the the sheet yeah so you had there was a whole list of you know female uh male non-binary prefer not to say whichever um yeah. or you could just say other whichever you prefer yeah so it was very um a lot of options there for you to choose from not just you know traditional ones like in previous years yeah thank you and then so the next stage then a week after i received and invite to their uh, next stage, it was known as a video Q&A. And so the video Q&A was a self-recorded video of me answering questions that they're asking. And in total, there was about five questions, which all followed the theme of just getting to know me really. They weren't asking much technical questions as such. They were just getting to know me type of questions. And so that's just the invite there that I was sent. And before actually beginning the actual recorded video q and I was given a practice round, which gave me a lot of time to prepare myself. I could practice as many times as I want and record and look back on my recording and fix any uh, anything, anything that I would rather say the next time. Now, the thing that really threw me off was I was only given 30 seconds to prepare um, for, to, for each question before the video actually recorded me. So when I would, when I hit begin, the question appeared and then a countdown timer of 30 seconds. So I had to quickly think of an answer before 30 seconds ran out and the record button hit. And so for each question, I was given about two to three minutes to answer. And after each question, the same would happen again. I was given 30 seconds to prepare before they hit record on me. So that was a little bit um, scary and definitely not something I'd been through before. So tell us a little bit more. Well, that was one of the questions. I just, yeah, I wanted to kind of drill yeah. into what were the type of questions and did they bear resemblance to the practice questions that you'd had or? Yeah, so the practice questions were not the actual questions at all. They were the same theme, but mm. they weren't the same questions. So even though I did practice, I was still given a new question that I didn't know, couldn't think of an answer long enough, more than 30 seconds for. And so, yeah, one of the questions was, uh, if you were a superhero for the day, who would you be and why? And all that I can remember from that day was, I said that I would be Spider-Man because it was just a superhero I was obsessed with when I was little. And I would just be living my childhood dream to be my favorite superhero for the day. And then, so about two weeks, um, two weeks after submitting my video q and I received a phone call from one of Travel Ports recruiters inviting me to the final stage, which is what is known as a showcase day to them. Mm. And so the showcase um, is basically their own way of travel for its own version of an assessment center. Mm. And so, yeah, it ran from quarter to 10 till half two. So it was a pretty long day and not something I'd gone through with any company before um, or that I heard, I've heard of anyone go through before either. And so during that showcase day, it consisted of team based activities, solving problems and riddles together as a team with the rest of the final applicants for this internship. And I was also given what they call an intern view, which is your standard one on one interview with um, the hiring team being asked behavioral and personal questions and just getting to know me really. And then after that intern view, I was given two individual technical tasks to be completed by the end of the day. And then I'll just go through. And so overall throughout the showcase day, the Travel 4 team then uh, just gave us an insight about Travel 4 and what they do and hearing from their past interns and their current employees in Travel Ports um, team, design team. And so I'll just go through each of those in more detail. Before you, you do that, Jody, can, I, can you jump back for a sec? Yeah. Um, in terms of the team activities, what, what was the breakdown of the teams? How many people were there? There was six, six final applicants in total, including myself, and then three of the design team employees. And mm -hmm. um, just sort of like in the one call, sort of not really, they weren't saying anything, just kind of moder monitoring us, obviously seeing who's you know putting in value into solving the problems and the riddles and so forth and another follow-on question from that then from the team interview from the teams and um, the members like what backgrounds did they come from were they like you or what students what there were they studying was one i remember was studying uh computer science a third year 
computer science student in Maynooth mm. is one of them that I can only very much remember there. I think what, from what I can remember, a lot of them were just computer science based, um, either in computer science in TUD, Maynooth, and then I think maybe one in DIT, I think. Okay, mm. thanks. You know what's interesting to me is is you've gone to a third stage now, right, of of this process, and this is the first time they've actually said we want you to do what it is you're going to do. Do you know what I mean? That's a tactical task. Yeah. So yeah. What, I think it's important for people to realize that they're more interested in you as a person, and you know whether if you're a good fit. Sometimes then, I mean, you you've proved your capabilities with your portfolio and your and your CV, but um, I think it's fascinating that they really wanted to get to know you and then they bring you the task. Uh, and you were doing that on a team or was it, or this is individual. Do you remember what the tasks uh, were that you needed to do? The team activities? No, the, the individual tasks. What were the? Yeah, what, what, um, what, I'll get into them in a bit more detail, but the individual tasks were, they were the only thing that related to this whole process that actually related to UX and UI. Yeah. Everything else was really just getting to know me and seeing what type of person I was. Mm. That's amazing. It's great. <laughs> and yeah, I'll just get into them in a bit more detail then. And so the first session was pretty much sort of an introduction and then after some team based activities. So, like I said earlier, there were six final applicants in total, including myself on the day. So we went around doing some icebreakers. It was just a simple introduce yourself and say anything you like about yourself. I just, I think I just said something about I'm a final year student. I'm studying a course called Creative Computing in uh, Dunlear in IDT. And after the icebreaker is Travelport then discussed more about their plan for the internship. They had mentioned it would be a very hands-on, not something where they get their interns to go get them a cup of coffee, whatever, it be very hands-on and they get their interns just as involved as their other employees during their projects and workshops. Yeah. And the interns, they also mentioned that the interns are also asked to log a daily journal, which they then would be given due dates for when they are to be submitted. Submitted in these journals, it would include, you know, what you learned that day, um, did you face any difficulties and what would you improve on yourself for the next project or something yeah. like that really. And then after the after the UX interns, we were then put into a separate meeting, which just had us and the three other employees of the design team to begin our team based activities. And I could tell that these activities would show what each of the applicants are like and what we are like working as a team, especially with a group of strangers that you've never met before. And so we had to um, work together to solve riddles and problems like this one, for example. Um, solve these in chronological order of all the different types of um, Apple and Windows software. And um, so we all just had to work together and one of the applicants in our team then had to gather our answers and then send them off to an email. And then I'll after... You yeah? can't leave it. I got to know some answers here. <laughs> so is it Lisa? Is Apple Lisa the first one? Oh, uh, I could not remember. I think that's something. I think I remember seeing that uh, film with Michael Fassbender. Um, that was about um, golly, it's, his name's gone out of my head. The founder of Apple, not Steve Wozniak. Yeah, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. Steve yeah, Jobs. Steve Jobs. That's the other one. I think it has something to do with him. So maybe somebody in the audience can enlighten me on that. I'd appreciate it. Okay, sorry. But I was like, gosh, I wish I really, I really want to know. Commodore 64, that sounds very old to me. Uh, yeah. I only knew yeah. about two or three of them. <laughs> MacBook right. Pro, and that yeah. was it, really. <laughs> it was far more, yeah. Uh, Mac, Apple Macintosh Portable, I remember those. Sorry, I'm a big Mac fan. As anybody who's been one of my students knows, I drag the silly thing with me. But uh, I love, you know, I, I never learn anything about. Uh, yeah, I know nothing about coding or anything like that, but I am a technology fan. Sorry to interrupt you there, darling, but I just kind of was like, oh my gosh, what are the answers? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, oh yeah, and then, so yeah, after a couple of hours of the team activities, I then had my actual interview and 
uh, I was I ended up being the first one picked out of all of us into a separate call. So that made me a little bit nervous. And yeah, the interview itself lasted roughly about 10, 15 minutes. It felt it went in really, really quick though. I didn't notice the time going by at all. And the two people that the two women that um were interviewing me from the hiring team, Elaine and Rosa, they're really, really lovely and they made me feel really relaxed and they're really easy to talk to. And then yeah, that's just it there. The first couple of questions were just getting to know me type of questions, asking me what my hobbies were. And then they just kind of dived more into the behavioral type questions then. And so these questions consisted a lot of how, how did I manage to adapt myself in college during COVID, especially with college being moved from on campus to online. Asking was it difficult for me? Um, another one I remember was after I had told them that I work a part-time job in Tesco, they asked me how did I manage the customers during especially the first lockdown when everyone kind of went into a big panic mode buying everything from all the shops buying all the toilet paper and everything so they were just asking me how did I manage and um, the chaos really and so overall by the end of the interview I felt really happy with what I had said although I did wish it went on longer which I would always be like that in general I wish oh I wish I said this and I wish I said that so but overall I was pretty happy with it And then after completing my interview, we were then asked to stay in the main call with the recruiters and the other final applicants who hadn't had their interviews yet to complete a set of uh, te technical tasks. And so the first task was a multiple choice questionnaire, which consisted of UX and UI related questions. And here's just a few images of the questions that I could get from it. So some of the questions were asking, you know, what is A-B testing? what a user flow is and what is the difference between UX and UI. So any of any UX students out there, you would understand what some of these mean. And so in total, there was 11 questions in total. So it didn't take um, too long to, fin to complete. Don't go anywhere with that. So educate us here. Uh, I would say the first one is uh, let's test it. The UK UX designers. Yeah, I think that's what I said. Okay, and user flow is, help me out. No. Um, user I said journey. the second, second one. Yeah, yeah user journey. And A B and testing. A B testing. testing. Yeah. yeah. Go on. Which one is that? Um, the third one, conducting the test rate of success of two types of design. Fantastic. <laughs> you two of them. That's pretty good. I've never heard of A B testing. I love it when I learn something in my in the the FYMMO webinars. So fun. Yeah, it's like two two. <laughs> different designs are very, very similar. I mm. this test one works better than the other. Thank you. <laughs> and then, so the second technical task then. The second technical task I was given definitely took me a lot longer to. However, I actually was really delighted when I read what it was, because if anyone has done interaction design, it was a task I was given last year in third year for my module interaction design. And my lecturer, Sue Reardon, Reardon, made us do what was called a zip crit, which essentially was we were to choose our favorite application and critique its user interface, which this is exactly what Travel4 had asked. And they had also asked, which was important, to make points on how the interface can be improved and why. Mm. So what I did was, if anyone knows, was I gave uh, UI design patterns that could be added to the user interface, and then I backed up why this would improve why this uh, ui design would improve um, the interface more so the application i chose to critique was the google play store web application and mm. the improvements i said would be um would that this would increase user fu functionality this would create a better visual solution and it would provide the user with more information so it would not feel lost or frustrated when using this piece of the interface and so I made sure to take my time during this task, task as the hiring team said, I could send them my finished task by the end of the day. So after I sent them my task, I just told them in our call and thanked them for everything during the showcase day. And yeah, that was pretty much finally the end of that entire day. <laughs> it's hardcore, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, so yeah, that's that brilliant. Was the entire brilliant. Process. Amazing. Amazing. And well done again. What a legend. Yeah, but absolutely, absolutely. what I've spotted is that 
like I know people, not including myself, I know people who have gone for interviews of places like Google and Facebook and that, and they do have those multiple interview parts and pieces. They do have these interactive pieces and they do have, um, you know, these, these, these questions that they throw at you to kind of try to get you to answer on your feet. And for some people, they can be dis disconcerting. And, you know, I think what's important that's a kind of a summary here is that is um Jody's attitude um like when during the summer actually I don't know if you remember this Jody I do but you sent me an email when I should have been on the beach you sent me an email going I'm thinking of doing a portfolio have you any ideas and can you critique it and I think we went through a, a back and forth and I told you to do something and you went off and did it and I think that's indicative of this is that you I you said I'm thinking of doing this and I said no don't do that go off and learn this and I threw another problem at you just to annoy you even more and give you more work which I'm very good at doing and you, you went off and you did it you know and that's indicative of of why you're where you are because the email was also sent out with the link and you didn't question you just went ahead and clicked on it to find out to, to do it um, and you went through the processes, you answered the processes, the questions that they threw at you, you adapted as much as you could. And maybe you suffered from a little bit of um, what did they call imposter syndrome? That's that's the new fancy phrase they put. Maybe you suffered from it, but you still went for it. And I think that is key for anyone who's listening here that she's not a UX student. She did a module in UX. And um, that one of my job. <laughs> Just that one module, and now maybe through through working with me over the years, you'd heard, you'd maybe heard me banging on about it or moaning about it. But it, you certainly, I guarantee you, you probably weren't the strongest U, UX person there. And I know you're not going to take offense from that because you're not a UX student. But the 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 more important thing is that you brought the attitude that you brought, and that you went through the process, and that you take risks, and that you're able to think on your feet. And you can hear by the way she's speaking here is that she's clear, and and is herself. And I think that's what's important. And that's what these companies are looking for. When we go through IDT and you see all the students having the crack and I see you in the canteen, that's why I do the job I do because you are yourselves. Um, bring that to the interview. That's the human side. Anyone anyone can lash an, inter lash an interface together. I know developers who could probably answer better questions than she did, but she brought the human aspect to that. And she believed in herself and she went through it. And so, Without me getting too emotional now, um, I would suggest, I would say, and I'd recommend to the rest of you that 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 it's something about that bringing your best self, being a human, and and believing in yourself, and going for these things. Um, yeah. No, absolutely. I think I, I had I have a question. I don't know if everyone's uh, writing questions. I'm not seeing any on this, but you can if you don't see the box. Um, you should see the box. It says questions there. And maybe there's some on the chat. I don't think so. The chat is different. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so what I was going to ask you, though, uh, Jody, was how did you prepare for this? Like, did you, like, because it seems, I know they, they gave you a loose outline. Uh, I don't, you were saying that you felt very lucky that they asked you the second technical uh, question that they did, because that is something that you you felt at home dealing with, which was great. Uh, but, I mean, how how would you, how did you prepare? At each stage, for, like, yeah, yeah. for each stage, so um, your CV, putting that together, how, I mean, let's go right back. You know, did you get I help with sure, the With the CV, I made sure that before going into fourth year, before beginning in September, that it was up to date. Um, and yeah. just made sure everything was there so that I didn't have to go back and kind of rephrase the CV. And then for each, each job that I do apply for, I make a cover, cover letter that's specified for them not just like a general one a bit more personal so i think i attached that as well and then i think i applied the first process that i applied for i remember it was pretty late in the evening and i just went through it all answered each question just straight away kind of not really much preparing for much of them really right and then the video q a was obviously very I knew what it was, but I didn't know what the questions were. I was only given just 30 seconds to prepare. So it was very on the spot, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, did you have, I mean, is this one of many uh, jobs that you've, you know, positions that you've gone for within your your final year? This, yeah, the 
yeah, I've applied for a lot of them since September, but this one was the one that obviously interested me most because I want to go into UX design and a lot of people know that there isn't a lot of UX design internships, graduate yeah. programs out there. And there's yeah. a lot of, you know, kind of general software development. So See, I was yeah, really I, happy when I seen that in Dawn's newsletter. Uh, what I find fascinating is I think what happens, and I when I was a, a senior in college, the same, uh, I actually, I didn't start to get ignited and kind of thinking about stuff until around this time. You know, this is when I kind of, you know, because we, we finished in June. Uh, and right about now, I started going, I don't know what the heck I'm doing next year. And I better get something in place, you know. So I started applying. And I think a lot of students have that. It's like, I'm, they're so busy. And I get that. They're so busy with assessments and, you know, just you know, making their living through college and trying to make the rent and all these different things. But, you know, just even throwing your hat into the ring every chance you get, you don't know what's going to come out of that. But if you don't throw your hat in the ring, there's no way anything's going to come out of it. So it's sort of to say, take a risk. You know, what's the exactly, worst thing? Yeah. Like they, they ignore your, you don't ever hear anything back. But let's say that you don't, yeah. right? And most of them don't even get back to you. <laughs> No, I know they don't. It's like being an actor. They, you, people just don't even let you know, you know, that good, bad, or indifferent. You don't get any feedback frequently, and that's really. But but you build up a tough skin by applying to loads of different things and just kind of going ah. So by the time something comes along that you really want, you you're you're not gonna freak out. You know what I mean? You're just gonna go with the process that you've developed, which is about being present, you know, putting in your best shot, and then see what happens. And I, that, I think sometimes people in their final year are kind of waiting for their college to uh, forget, like, you know, to be over, and then they're going to look for something. But psychologically, I would say to you, it is far better to get your, start getting ducks in the row now for what's going to happen in you, for you next year, um, because it's going to take a lot off your mind and it'll, it'll send us a, like a pattern of joy through everything that you're doing because you'll know that you've got a destination. You know, um, and I think that that's, I don't know, it, did you did you feel that way I, or am I, I mean, maybe that's speaking for my own. I like to know what's happening next in my life to some yeah. extent. I like surprises, yeah. but what yeah, about yourself? Definitely. Like it is, I know it is really, really hard to find, especially in final year, find the time to just actually sit down and apply for jobs. Yeah. But if you can find the time, definitely do, because yeah. you really don't know what happens. Like. What travel for has said to me after i got the internship is that it's a bit it's a gateway into their graduate program yeah. so you know you really don't know what's what's there around the corner you know so i understand it is really really hard to find the time to apply for these jobs but if you do know what you want to go into or even if you don't know what you want to go into if it's something that's related to what you're studying just apply and you might if you do get it you might find out that it's something that you really like or even if at least it's something you can tech, check off a list that you don't like you won't go yeah. into it again. I think, I think um, it's important also to think like um, the more of these applications you go through, the mm. better you get at them. So the yeah. first two can be kind of overwhelming. The first three or four can be overwhelming. But after a while, you're going, okay, this is more the same thing. And if it does take time, and I appreciate that you have en enough going on on board on top of this, but. I suppose this is your livelihood and if you want to get into the industry it's it's worth that investing that time into your future and once you do one of those kind of those two three key parts and um, doing it again and again and again i think gets personally from experience it gets a little bit easier and you know um one of the old things is like it's the same as like you know when you you know you have an interview or something you practice in the mirror um the more you do that yeah, the more you kind of refine the answers and the more you kind of get better in that. So all, all of those techniques we go through as well. So it's something, you know, that you should certainly be aware of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, something. sorry, dear, go on. Oh, uh, it was just, it was something that I had tried to perfect, obviously, with an internship I applied for um, uh, this year in like April for like it was UX related and got to the final stage and I was given the call then saying that I didn't get it and one of the main reasons was I didn't have a portfolio to show you know I talked about all the projects I did had images but I wasn't able to actually show what I had so then that's why I went straight to Stefan to say how do I get a portfolio 
if I make one. Yeah. yeah, well, I think this is this is really important here. So I'm um, so please one of the um, some of the people who are in the in the chat, if you're there, just write something so we know that it's working, but so that we can address some of the questions. But I because and the reason I want to know that is because if we have computing students, then I can direct that question to them or if psychology students or any students, because I work with quite a lot of them across the Institute. But Jody, and you wouldn't mind me saying this, is not a designer. And when I say that, I mean she's not a design student. Um, so how, if you're not a designer, how can you how can you put together a design portfolio? It sounds very designy, um, but I think what's important is that she was able to do that, um, and and she has been exposed to some design thinking by, by the likes of working with myself and maybe um, someone like John um, in computing. But ultimately, nowhere near as much as, you, as the guys in as Viscom would be, for example, um, or or UX, the undergraduate in UX. So, in terms of your portfolio of your portfolio, Jody, can you can you speak to that a little bit and maybe tell us about that? Uh, yeah. So I created it using an up and coming static site generator called Eleventy, which is just a sort of um, a tutorial I followed, which was just like a blog post. So the projects that I, I only have two projects on at the moment, which were my professional practice project, which is a project the creative computing students undergo during third year. And then if those third year students choose their elective called web application frameworks, one of the CAs I did, I have that as one of my one of my projects as well. So I made even though those two projects weren't UX design related, I made sure to, I screen recorded myself demonstrating them and made design UX related points on them and not so much as code wise. So that's kind of what I did with that. Yeah, I think that's it, like the cover letter that you, you tailor to wherever you're sending sending it. Um, it's We have these all of these transferable skills that all of you have actually. And it's just yeah. kind of just marketing yourself for that for that angle or this angle. Uh, I have a question for you um, that you don't have to answer, but could you give us the general salary range of, of uh, because this is a paid inter internship, is it? Yeah, yeah. So um, they said it's 22,000 uh, a year for a salary. And I'll Great. just be uh, doing, it's just a six month internship from the end of January to the end of July, which then opens up into hopefully getting a graduate role with them. Great. And so that's this January. So you're going to start this, this yep. year. Wow. Okay. So while you're still finishing off your studies. Yep. yep. That's going to be challenging. <laughs> so so <laughs> we might, we might, we might speak on that very, very briefly in the sense that Jody is a fourth year student and she is doing her fourth year project and I'm her fourth year project supervisor and also the guy who set up the initial uh, internship so yeah there's loads of places where this could go wrong but I mean it, it was important that we were able to discuss that with the head of the department and and we've been very clear with Travelport and with Jody that her studies and that her degree are certainly yeah. the most important thing here and that's what we're focusing on here um, but it's about going back to that point that you mentioned earlier on, Jody, and also Rebecca, about how you kind of tailor something to tick mm -hmm. a few boxes. And the one example I can always think of is, and I'll do it very quickly, is that my sister was a great writer and still is, um, and I was terrible. And she used to write down these beautiful essays, and I used to learn them off for the Leaving Cert and, or the Junior Cert. And uh, whenever I'd look at one of her essays, I'd look at the titles and then I'd adapt that at essay to be about that title, you know? So it's about thinking, it's about, as opposed to working hard, it's about working smart. Um, and I think like that possibly is just a different, it is a different example. But in this context, I think we worked smart. Like we liaised with the head of the department. We, we, we liaised with uh, Travelport and based with uh, Jody's experience and her attitude and her, her GPA to date, we're confident that she can achieve this. But I mean, ultimately, it's her decision and she has yeah. to achieve all of the learning outcomes of the final project. But perhaps you can talk about, Jody, how we've tailored, hopefully, how we've how we've talked about tailoring your major project 
to the role and how it can be applied. Yeah, yeah. No, I yeah think so definitely, um, as it is going to be really, really difficult, and you know, just I'm gonna obviously just put as much uh, effort and hard work into it as I can. But with my final major project for fourth year, I'm going to try and tailor it as much as I can with the job. So the job, the team uses a design system for all of the company's products. So I'm going to then use their design system for uh, my project. And so I hope obviously each day that I'm there, I learn more about the principles as to why we should use this and why not to use that. Um, so I'm trying to make it as feasible as I can for my major project, definitely. That's good. I I, um, I think that uh, we have to give a, a big shout out to Dawn. I know she's really busy at the moment, but she is an amazing resource for our, our third, fourth year, and second and first years as well, to be honest with you, our students, because she has got, if you, I'm sure if you've seen any of our webinars, there's a lot that, that are up on the website there that you can kind of tick back into about building your CV, about LinkedIn, about different things. But she's got the energy of, of, of about 5,000 people put into one. And she is your resource, uh, as with as well as your lecturers and, and your colleagues and everything else. But it's an important resource for you to tap into. Um, and this is where that started, really, was that the, the newsletter. And I know you guys get so much email, but that's when you really want to be looking at, particularly in third and fourth year, to see, you know, what's going on. So when you're in third year, you can start applying for stuff just for the, you know, the experience of it, seeing what they're what you need to do before uh, the stakes are higher. And I think the stakes get really high when you've graduated. And I think that's when people can kind of go, oh, my gosh, you know, so it's really good to start doing stuff now. Um, I don't see any. I can I can put on everybody's microphone for a sec if you guys want to ask any questions that are. Uh, but I don't see anybody's writing in. I don't know if it's not working or if it's. Um, Stephen, I guess there's write? no way to know unless you put on the mic. Okay. Well, God knows what we're gonna get. You guys ready? Okay, all there. Would be nice. <laughs> well, we, we could be hearing someone's. I I unmuted all, but it didn't work. All. Unmute all. Nope, I've undone it, but nobody, no, I, they are all still red, so they can make that choice. So if you'd like to ask a question, you can now um, unmute your microphone. So you see that up on the right hand side, you can just click on it. It'll go from red to green, and you can ask any questions that you like. Or I guess there aren't any. I mean, we've been asking questions all the way through, so maybe we've answered everyone's questions. I, I'm not sure, but uh, yes, I, I. Well, I mean, if there's anything else, Jody, the, any advice you'd give to fourth years at this point, or third years, or you know, how to. Sorry, say that again, Rebecca. I just said that um, I asked if there was any advice final words you'd like to give to third, fourth years, to your colleagues, to people in, in different courses, business, uh, film, different, you know, what what would you, I mean, I know you just like them, but I think sometimes we take advice better from our peers than we do from uh, uh, other folks. Um, one thing I would say is, is that if you are constantly applying for internships or graduate programs is to not give up because I know the feeling of when you apply for 10 in one day and you don't hear back after two weeks from any of them, that it can be really, I'd say, can really break you down and make you feel really upset and you just wouldn't apply for any. So I'd say definitely just don't give up on that and just keep applying for what interests you or even interests you a little bit and hopefully you hear back from someone soon. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I just have to plug uh, Vital before we go, unless you have anything else, Stefan? No, what a great thing to say. Never give up. I feel like I'm watching X Factor here. Good for you. Um, yeah, good for you. And believe in yourself, students, because if, if I can get a job, and if Rebecca can get a job, anyone can get jobs. Yeah, I'm not even a design student, and I got a design job. That's amazing. There you go. That's amazing. There I'm sure go. there's a lot of design students that wish you wouldn't say that. But anyway. <laughs> 
but seriously, I, I don't think people realize that you really can go for anything you want. You know, you can have a business degree and become an actor. You know what I mean? There's no, and actually, to be honest with you, I think sometimes it's nice to cross disciplines, you know, because you're, you're not a cookie cutter then, you you stand out. Well, this is someone who studied philosophy or someone who started business and now they want to be, you know, work in the arts. Let's see what happens, yep. do you know? So that's really excellent advice. Um, um, Vital Week, which or Vital, the Vital Program, which has been going on over the last three weeks um, in IADT. We are having our uh, focus groups for students tomorrow. If there's anyone who wants to do a late sign up, uh, there is a link. Um, I I don't know where I can put a link in the 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 box here, but um, to talk about your experience of COVID. And those results will be out on the 30th of November. Uh, we have an outside facilitator who's working with the students. We've already done staff session and uh, uh, an academic staff and a, a professional managerial staff. And it's really interesting what people have experienced over the last two years. And you know, my, my goal is to kind of capture that. Um, all of the talks that we've done will be available at some point. We have to edit some stuff and that kind of thing. Um, Oh, probably in about two weeks. They'll be on uh, our own website, IDT, in the teaching and learning sector section, I think. And also they'll be on uh, the National Forum for the Enhancement of Teaching and Learning. They'll also have a copy of them. I might throw some up on FYMMO as well. But um, I want to thank Jody very much. Thank you so much. Congratulations on all your successes. You. And you know, you really are a case in point. You make your own success. You know, you you just Go out there, go for it, risk it. it I mean, and it, it, I, the, it, yes, it is hard to do. No one's saying it isn't. But if it wasn't hard, you wouldn't love it as much as you do. You know, it's when you take those chances that things come come back to you. And it's probably time to play yeah. the lottery. So your chances? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's another day's work. That's another day's work. So thank you so much uh, for joining us today, everyone. Stefan, always a pleasure. I'll see you. Uh, during the week, I have no doubt. And um, yeah, so if you have thoughts on COVID, let me know. Just send me an email, uh, rebecca.roper at idt.ie if you want to be included um, tomorrow's event. Thank you so much. And big thanks to the wonderful Caroline Healy for her uh, constant support behind the scenes. Thank you, Caroline. Do the best. Good night, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Well done. Thank Bye. You. Bye.